Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing changing the fuse on the G540. Now, for those of you who have never done this before, first thing, of course, you're going to need is the 125 volt 7 amp fuse that is actually um, placed inside the G540's motherboard. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, I do have these fuses, and from now on, whoever purchases the bare drive will receive two of these fuses. They're just good to have as a backup. And again, simple to replace once you understand it. Um, the tools you're going to require, I like to use a pick. And again, there's nothing special about these. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them anywhere you want. Again, it's a very fine pick. This way we can actually pry the chassis um, of the G540 apart because, again, you can see where the mounting tabs are. Uh, we're going to pry them apart naturally with this as it goes inside there. It'll easily release those t the tension on the tabs, allowing you to dismantle the actual case from the actual motherboard. The other tool you're going to want is uh, some nice needle-type pliers. Again, these are electronic pliers that I have. You can use whatever works for you. And that will be, once again, to actually fold the actual terminals of the fuse. You can see how long this is. Of course, we're not going to be using that in full length. You're also going to want a pair of scissors. Nothing special, very simple. Um, so let's begin. You can see we've got the mounting tabs right here. I'll see if I get the camera angle right. Um, all we're going to do is bring our actual pry tool and we're going to just snap inside there and we're going to lift forward slightly. And the whole goal here is to just make sure that one end is up and out of the way. And you can see how when it actually locks on there, you can see it's not in alignment anymore. And this, this way, the actual tab is now ready to be dismantled. We're going to do it on this side as well. You see I just lifted it up, placed it over, and you can see both tabs are now ready for removal. So what we're going to do is just turn it around. You got those same two tabs on this side. Come up. You can see that one's now ready. Now we do this one. It's like they say, guys, it really is in the tools you have. And you can see by doing that, that just came right apart. And now we can see the actual G540's motherboard. You can see exactly what we've got here. Uh, it's very, very straightforward once you've seen everything. And again, uh, just to point out some quick details, you do have the DOM, which is date of manufacture, so you can see when the actual drive was made. Um, you can see our DB9 connectors. These, again, are for naturally our motor cables. Here's our trim tabs for our actual axis. These are used, once again, to adjust the actual uh, smoothness at the low speed of the steppers. Um, now what we want to do is go through, and as we come in here, we're going to want to just pull this board apart carefully. And what I like to do, you can see the tabs inside there with those connectors. Matter of fact, I'll see if I can zoom in. You can see that connector right there. And then there's four of these, of course, because that's where the motherboard plugs into the drives. You can see they're starting to come out. The easiest way to do this, I find, is to simply release pressure evenly throughout the board. And you want to do this carefully, guys, because, again, this is uh, a PC board. So we want to take our time. Nothing rushed here and just work it out real slow. There you go. And you can see it's coming apart. Now replacing a drive is exactly the same process. You're going to do this to replace a drive as well. And there she comes apart. Now you can see how we have the motherboard. Okay. You can see our mounting grid right here. And this once again is where our drives plug in. Very simple design, very efficient. And again, we'll turn her over, and you can see now we've got the motherboard. So now what we want to do is we're going to come right onto the back side, and you can see here is where our fuse is located. Okay, so once again, this same pry tool, once again with that fine tip, you're all set to remove the fuse, and we want to do it carefully. We're going to come right underneath. Again, this certainly isn't rocket science, but a, a quick technique does help out, and I just lifted it right out of the board. Okay. Here you go. Now what I recommend, because I get questions on this all the time, if you're going to replace the fuse, you're really going to want to try to match the length of the terminals of the fuse. Okay, A lot of guys get confused with that. They'll go through fuses because once you cut these terminals on the fuse, you're kind of stuck with the length you have. 
So what I like to do is just fold these out. And this will give you a very close rough estimate of how to actually cut the actual leads to the fuse. So we just want it to be close, it does not have to be exact. And of course, the straighter the better, it'll give you more of an accurate uh, measurement, so to speak. So we're just going to come over here real easy. You can see what we've got now. I'm just going to take my hand out of the way because it makes it a little easier. Right there. Okay. So now what we're going to do, now we've got the actual measurement of the fuse as far as terminal length. We're just going to come over here and work our way holding it so that we can get it just about lined up, make sure everything looks good. You can see you've got that set right there. You're just going to come in, I'm trying to get it on camera as much as possible, and I just trimmed it flush. So now what I'm going to do, switch her out, other side, match everything up once again, get it as close as possible. You can see our terminals, and then we're just going to come in again and trim. And if you did it right, you're going to find that you will have two ends that are very close. So now what we're going to do is we're going to keep our area clean. At least I'm a clean freak when I work because, again, more parts over here makes more confusion, just mentally, so to speak. At least for me it does. So now what we want to do is bring our needle nose pliers in. And you can see I'm bringing the tips really close to the fuse, right about there. And I'm just bending them up. And you can finish this the rest of the way with your fingertips. Again, based on where the location is on the board, so where everything is set. Because again, on the board, you're going to find that you may have to bend it a couple times in a couple different directions in order to get the proper bends where you need them to give you proper spacing on the alignment of the holes. That's totally normal. Just take your time. A little bit of trial and error goes a long way, so to speak. So just take your time. You can see here. We should have it now. Close. Align it. And I am doing this real time because I get asked about that a lot as well. I'm just using our pliers now to hold the unit. Come in and you can see I'm a little short. So what I'm going to want to do, once again, is just mold her out. Come in and just mold her out to where we can get her straight. And we'll just take our time. Because we know once we have the length correct, everything else will line up. It's just a matter of where we bend to articulate the actual terminals. Try not to put force on the fuse itself, of course. Whoop. And now we'll come in from the top. in. I'm just going to put a little pressure there and I'm going to start putting some pressure on with my my actual uh, pliers and you can see it's actually going right in. There it goes and there it goes. And Now that fuse has been replaced and you can see just everything lines up and really all they are guys is slide terminals. You can see on the back side just so everybody's aware there's little cups that's where the leads actually go into. As long as it's fully seated, like you see right here, you're fine. Okay, now changing drives, because I've gotten questions on this. Very, very simple to do. You can see we've got our actual screws right here and right here. Uh, these are your four drives. When I get questioned on what's actually going inside the G540, this is what the inside of the G540 looks like. Here's your G250. X drives, you can see them all right here. You can see we have our terminal plugs. Once again, these are what actually plug into the motherboard. And what's really interesting with this, <clears throat> just so everybody understands, the G251X drive from uh, Gecko Drive compared to the G250s that are inside this drive, the only difference is one has a screw terminal block. So the G251s actually have the screw terminal block, so you can use these drives individually without the motherboard option that the G540 has. Other than that, they're the exact same drive. Okay, So now we're going to just do everything in reverse that we just did. Once again, always verify before you assemble everything that you're once again flush. You'll see that the fuse is all the way bottomed out. Everything looks perfect. 
Okay. Once we do that, switch her around. The uh, actual pins will only align one way. If you misalign this and go the opposite way, you're going to find nothing lines up. Okay. So that's a real surefire way to let you know that you're assembling it incorrectly. So just take your time. Once again, when everything is aligned up, you can see how the pins are all right there and we're all set. So now what we want to do is evenly apply pressure. And I like doing it usually on the middle portion of the board in between, or I should say the spacing in between the actual drives itself. You can see they start going in and I start evenly applying pressure. Okay. We don't want to do uneven pressure. You can see when everything is fully seated. Now on this side, it's not yet. We'll just come in a little even right there, right there. Everything now looks flush. You can see it. Okay, we got a little on the end. There we go. Close the gap. Check your alignment on everything. Make sure everything looks good. And it does. Now, the other thing to pay close attention to is your LEDs. When you go to actually put the case back on, they can shift a little bit. So you want to make sure your alignment is right where it needs to be. An easy way to do that is put something round, once again, with a tapered tip in between. You can use anything from uh, a piece of wood, which is really nice because it's soft, not going to damage anything. Um, but just do it carefully to make sure that these LEDs are in alignment with, once again, our black case. This is imperative. So here's our power LED, our fault LED. Everything should be in alignment. So now what we're going to do, once again, get our case back in alignment so to speak and we're going to reverse it we're just going to pry up slightly on one end make sure we're up and just come over here and you can see how i'm doing this just lifting real easy nothing ridiculous we'll do the same thing and see that's why a fine tip is so important because once you can get it and you can see it's, it does take a little op a little uh practice in the sense that bear with me i do have a camera in my face right now <laughs> so i'm trying to do this on camera and also um, doing it in a way that you guys can see everything. Here we go. And you can see that side's basically done. Now we're going to come over here and do the same thing. And I'm just going to pry this side too. I'm just turning it over. And we're going to come over this side and you're going to see just like that. Now what we want to do is make sure once again all of our DB9 connectors are in full alignment. The lights are in alignment. You can see nothing is sealed yet. But you can see right here in this general area uh, where our actual jack nut is, we want to make sure that everything is in full alignment. So you can always just come over here with that, the tool, and just release it. You can see I just pulled it over and everything is in full alignment and it should just snap just like that and you're golden. Okay. You'll see now, make sure that all the tabs are sealed. Okay. Doing it real carefully. Alignment is good. You can see a tab right there looks good. Tab right there looks good. Over here, tab looks good. And over here, the tab looks good. And there's your drive, guys. Make sure your LEDs look good. Everything is in full alignment there. You can see we've got uh, full exposure of the red and the green. So we're all set there. And once again, there's no stress on the jack nut portion of the DB9 connector. And she is assembled and ready to go. Once again, you can see your trim pots. Everything is in alignment there as well. So again, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, changing a fuse out on the drive kit will definitely keep you guys always up and running. That's the major portion of servicing on a 540 that typically you would have to do. Um, there are videos out there like this. I tried to do it a little bit differently so you guys could cover virtually everything as far as whether you wanted to replace a drive individually in the system or if you wanted to go through and, of course, change a fuse. Uh, to all of my subscribers and everyone out there that's watching this, I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, to all of you, it's been extremely busy at the shop. I'm trying to get back with uh, replies as soon as possible. Um, I'm getting a lot more requests for quotes, of course, due to the time of year, and I'm doing my best to keep my head out of water, so to speak. Uh, so please just bear with me. Um, but again, I know that this video may raise uh, some questions. Just message me once again directly at storm2313 at gmail.com. Of course, that's my direct email address. And of course, you can always message me through uh, my eBay store, eDealers Direct. Links to both of these will be in the description below. Once again, to my subscribers, I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you for all of your support. Um, one thing I do want to make very clear, though, I'm getting a lot more requests for supporting systems that I have not built. And I have to tell everyone out there, I want to make myself very clear, 
I cannot be expected to support systems and components that you have not purchased from me. Uh, I, I will help you any way I can, but I must charge you for it. I mean, again, this is not a hobby to me. This is what I do full time as a career. And again, this is what puts food on my table. So no different than you. Uh, no one would ever expect you. I hope no one would ever expect you to work for free. Please don't expect that of me. I will definitely give you as much support as possible. A lot of times I'm the path of least resistance, so to speak, because we know vendors out there typically don't support all of their products they sell. We know that. I've done numerous videos on it, and many of you have already experienced it. Um, so please just keep that in mind. Um, if you contact me, if it's a simple yes and no question, of course, I'm not going to charge you for it. But if I have to go into full detailed analytics of your system and get forensics involved, I'm going to tell you right now, um, it can get pricey very quickly. And most of the time, the, the most convenient way to make things set up uh, as far as uh, doing a retrofit or even walking you through a retrofit would be giving you a quote and letting you be the judge of what you want to do because a lot of times it may involve rewiring the whole system, rewiring certain components. You may not be comfortable with that. So again, keep that in mind. And again, it's no different than what you do in your career. You have to look at how much time you're willing to invest and how much your time is worth. And I do the exact same thing when I provide quotes. So thank you all again. Take care.